What a great love it is. Love of every love the best. Pray that you know it. The love of Jesus, what it is. Pray you know you're loved beyond your imagination tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that you would uh, raise us by your Spirit. Raise us, Lord, into the heavenly realms. Help us that we might see that for his own Jesus Christ intercedeth. For his own Jesus watcheth o'er them from the throne. There's a king in glory tonight. And he orders all things for his own. And we know that all things work together for good. For those who love God and are loved of God. Father, we come to you. You're the God of all the earth, the God of all the cosmos. In the beginning there was nothing, but you spoke, and the spirits hovered over the face of the deep, and Jesus was there, all things created by him and for him. And all things were made good. And at the end of that great week of creation, the apex of thy creatorial work was man, male and female, you made us. And you set us in Eden, and all was good. The Lord, we're still on the earth but we're not in Eden anymore. We pray you would help us to live in a fallen world as witnesses for the King. Lord, we're tarnished by sin. We feel our sin. We wander. We're prone to wander. Draw us back with cords of love. Help us. Help us that we might Uh, Be one in Christ Jesus. Help us all to live for you. Grant us thy Spirit's aid as we live in the world uh, this week, but not of it. May our lives reflect something of thee, O God. May we be ready always to give an answer to those who ask us for the hope that lies within us. Lord, we pray you'd open conversations even tomorrow. Um, Someone might ask us, what did you do on Sunday? What were you doing last night? Help us, Lord, to seize every opportunity to speak of Jesus Christ and of his love and of the pardon of our sins by his precious blood. Father God, we come to you tonight. We pray again. For our nation, we would bring to you our Queen and our Prime Minister. And we ask, Lord God, that you would grant help to every parliamentarian, uh, to every local councillor, those newly elected, Lord. We pray there would be many who love you and love your work and would serve you with gladness. We ask, Lord God, come in mighty power, in the corridors of power. May the name of Jesus Christ be blessed, and may thy word have free reign. Grant us leaders, Lord, who love you. We ask in your mercy. Father, we pray for the world. We remember again India, but there are so many other nations, Lord, Brazil uh, and others who... um, are being swamped by this pandemic. Men and women and boys and girls are struggling for their last breath even tonight. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Thank you again for the wartime efforts, Lord, of professionals and civilians who have 
helped many given hours voluntary service that we might have this vaccination program we pray lord for that and give you thanks for it and we ask lord we might know your spirit's help and greater freedoms uh, in the days ahead grant your wisdom we pray lord of god we pray for ourselves tonight and lord as we gather tonight we uh, commit to you uh, our dear sister esther as uh, she heads off to ghana and we uh, will miss her we entrust her into your tender care we pray for gurnam and julia as well as bless that family and keep them each one in your tender care in the days ahead father we pray for one another and you know our hearts our troubles and our concerns meet to our every need lord we thank you that you are able well able to meet every need in christ jesus help us each one to trust you and to cast all our cares upon you knowing that you care for us and may we each know the blessing and the mercy of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with us and as we lord turn to your word we pray come mighty and speak we pray let us hear the voice of the living god we ask all these things in jesus name amen turn to ecclesiastes chapter 5 Ecclesiastes 5, this is God's word, and we pick up um, where we left off. Uh, Last Lord's Day, we commenced to read God's word, Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 8. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter. For he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof? saving the beholding of them with their eyes. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth the son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil, that is, um, that in all points, so he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labored? for the wind. All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely for one to eat and to drink, and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath God had given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, 
and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God, for he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. Amen. May God bless his word to us uh, as we come and continue in our worship uh, as we have the word of God preached. Let's pray and ask his help. Blessed God, we thank you for your word, your eternal word, your life-giving, life-changing word. We thank you for uh, your words of wisdom. And Lord, we come before you and ask that you would indeed make us wise as to how we should live. And Lord, that we should um, seek you and fear you and live and enjoy all that you give us. Bless your word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. As we gather on this Lord's Day evening, as we gather on other Lord's Day uh, evenings as well and in the morning, um, primarily we gather to worship God. Primarily we gather to, to meet with God and to have him speak to us and to feed us, and to nourish us, and to encourage us. We come uh, to this place to worship God. And that's primarily what we do. Uh, But it's also true to say uh, that as we gather on this, the first day of the week, we do so that we might be equipped to stand and serve the Lord on every other day of the week. And tomorrow's Monday, and the high points of Sunday are quickly followed by the low points of Monday. Mondays don't seem the same. Here we have gathered, as it were, in uh, our holy bubble. But then there's a world. How do we cope on Monday and on Tuesday? For soon the delights of the Lord's Day give way all too soon to the the disappointments of Monday. Here in Ecclesiastes 5, uh, we find, as always, help for our life under the sun. Our text is verse 8. Uh, which will, we trust, help us and guide us through to the end of this chapter. Verse 8. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. So here we are. Praising God and blessing God for such an opportunity as this. Um, And we are cocooned in a holy bubble on the Lord's Day evening. But as we've said, tomorrow we'll find us in the world. Uh, Whether we're at school uh, or college or factory or office or in the home, the Monday's going to be difficult. (laughs) If it's like any other Monday, it'll be difficult. Life's not fair. Fellow pupils at school are bullied. And maybe you're one of them. Some in the office, in the factory, are the boss's favourite. There are people who are promoted before you because of whom they know, not because what they know. And there's injustice, and there's level of corruption all around. And it's, it's tough out there in the world on a Monday. And Solomon says, marvel not. If I might paraphrase him, I mean, Solomon's real thrust is, what do you expect? What do you expect in a fallen world? 
That's, that's what lies behind marvel not. When you see injustice and corruption in the world, what do you expect? And friend, if you're shocked by low-level corruption, uh, because believe me, that's all that we have in Britain, whatever injustice you see or experience, it is low-level. You spare a thought for those in so many other countries around the world um, where corruption is rife and publicly displayed. You can get no public service unless you pay for it and pay uh, more than the fee. So in chapter 5 from verse 8, Solomon helps us with our disappointments. First of all, he says, and you need to grab this and understand it. If you have not got it by now, people will disappoint you. That's verse 8 in a nutshell. You go into school and someone who's been your best friend for years turns nasty. That's because people disappoint. You're in the workplace and, and the boss is asking you to do the impossible. And there's corruption and injustice and life's not fair. People will disappoint you, friend. Marvel not. A couple of points to clarify just before we move on. I mean, why, why not? You know, marvel not. There's corruption. Well, why, why shouldn't I marvel? Or what does Solomon mean by the rest of verse 8? Um, well, truth be told, um, the Hebrew is complex. Um, so some take the view um, that Solomon is saying, hey, you know what, there's corruption everywhere, but don't be shocked and don't be worried um, so if, for example, you see a police constable who is corrupt, uh, don't worry, he's got seniors, uh, and they have chief constables, and it will all be sorted. Um, so that's one view. For he that is higher than, uh, than the highest regardeth, and there's higher than they. So low-level corruption in the junior ranks will be sorted out by superiors. Don't worry about it. Uh, I don't believe that's what Solomon's saying at all. Yeah, that is hopeless optimism. Um, you know, so when you see corruption, don't worry about it. It'll all be sorted out. Yeah, that's, that's not the real world. What Solomon is saying is this. Uh, brutal, as always. You will come across corruption. You will come across injustice. You live long enough. You don't have to live very long. And you will see it. You'll be affected by it. You'll be damaged by it. But the Lord is on high, higher than all he sees, and he will sort it. That's what Solomon's saying. And verse 9 touches on that as well. And moreover, the prophet of the earth is uh, for all. And the king himself is served by the field. Uh, um, uh, the king only survives uh, because of the laborers. Uh, bottom up, uh, God sees all. There's order. God's king over all. Um, so when you see corruption, when you see injustice, remember this. We have a God who sees and he'll sort it. The second point of clarification is simply linked to that, I suppose, is what is the connection between verse 8 and the early verses of chapter 7? Uh, and the early verses, rather, of chapter 5. One to seven, and there are some who would say there's no connection whatsoever. Um, Solomon has gone off in a bit of a ramble. Um, well, I don't believe that either. The connection with what has gone before is what we're told in verse two: uh, that God is in heaven, and you are upon the earth. So, when you see oppression, there's lots of oppression. When you see injustice, when you see violence done, 
Marvel not. Don't be shocked. Because you're on earth. And this is a fallen earth. And so Solomon says, what do you expect in a fallen earth? God's in heaven, you're on earth, and, and you're no longer in Eden. And we're not in Eden anymore. We're still in the earth, but we're not in Eden. This is, this is what happens now that we're cast out of Eden. When sin is rife, we're in an earth of full of depraved, selfish, self-seeking, self-worshipping humanity. What do you expect on Monday morning? That's really what Solomon's saying. So he's going from here into the world on Monday morning and saying, oh, we should all be nice to one another. This is earth. This is a fallen earth. Solomon's been brutally honest with us from the beginning. This is life under the sun. So often we're told as Christians that we should get a life and get real and live in the real world. Solomon's reply to that is simply that we do. We do live in the real world. We're not shocked by corruption. I mean, we don't like it, but we're not shocked. We're not shocked by injustice. We're not shocked when power is held by a few people and absolute power corrupts and the poor are oppressed and people are all out for themselves and number one hey, that's the real world we understand that we're not shocked when people disappoint us or we shouldn't be the non-Christian worldview or if I might put it, the world's worldview, which is founded upon evolution and the enlightenment. I've always had a struggle with that term. Uh, how could the enlightenment ever be called enlightenment? It just brings darkness. But anyway, that's by the by. Uh, evolution and the enlightenment looks for advancement and the perfecting of a human society. And Men, are, men and women are evolving from the slime pit and, and there's a day coming when we will be perfect. And in this world, if we can just educate people and, and, and help them, they will, they will rise to their full potential and here we will, we will have, um, in terms which are rather strange to them, but nonetheless, what they're really looking for is heaven on earth. Solomon says, that's not going to happen. We're on a fallen earth. We've left Eden a long, long time ago. We all fall short, all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And you can see that. Um, that lost hope all, all around us. There's not a week goes by when our uh, our our role models let us down. You know, there's a scandal. Some newspaper unearths uh, this great story that a politician has been found lying. Can you believe that? Someone in authority has lied to the Houses of Parliament. Scandal. From time to time, a school teacher runs off with a pupil. I mean, how could they do that in a position of trust? What a stupid man, stupid woman. But that's you're not going to be shocked by that. It's not great news, but that's what happens. People let us down. Sadly, the church has pastors who let people down. Our role models disappoint. From time to time, a politician is exposed as a liar. From time to time, a school teacher runs off with a pupil. From time to time, you can fill in the blanks. You're on earth. You're on a fallen earth. There's injustice and corruption. People will disappoint you. 
And Solomon says, I'm sorry, but don't blame God. One day all your disappointments will be gone. Jesus Christ has taken the pain of all your disappointments. Here's a world of injustice and corruption. I mean, does God know anything about injustice? Does Jesus Christ know anything about injustice? You need to reread the accounts of his crucifixion. We have a high priest who knows, who's lived among sinners, who can empathize. Does Jesus Christ know anything about the powerful abusing their power? I think so. Don't let Monday morning shock you. You're on earth. It's a fallen earth. People. People you respect. One day they will disappoint you. And sadly, people will disappoint you in the church, just as much as in the workplace, the school, or the factory, or the office. I'm going to turn briefly to Psalm 55. Psalm 55, David is disappointed. Someone's hurt him. It wasn't someone in the world. It wasn't an enemy. And so he says in Psalm 55, verse 12, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me then I would have hid myself from him but it was thou a man, mine equal, mine guide mine acquaintance we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company David's not the first casualty of people in the church who have let us down, and he's not the last. And when people disappoint us in the church, that's a great hurt. And if it's happened to you, then you'll feel the pain. The people disappoint us. Christians are not sinless and we hurt people we let them down and if we do we need to face up to that and confess and seek forgiveness and reconciliation Solomon's brutal when you see see things corrupt injustice oppression when you see Monday morning out there then be prepared for it. Marvel not. People will disappoint us. God's in heaven. We're on earth. And we're not in Eden anymore. And Solomon continues in this chapter to tell us of other things that will disappoint us. And so he moves on from verses 8 and 9 and tells us that if your hope is in wealth and stuff, then wealth and stuff will disappoint you. And that's the message of 10 through to 13. He that lover, loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. He that has an abundance will want more. Silver and gold will never satisfy. 
And Solomon says in, in these verses, it's the laborer who has little money, who has plenty sleep. He doesn't have to care about his bank accounts, doesn't have to care about his pile of gold under his bed. He's worked hard. He's got paid a pittance. He doesn't have much, but he's got plenty sleep. And conversely, the one with much stuff worries much. Need to care for all this. Need to invest it. Where can I invest it in an age where there's no interest? What's going to happen? It's all devaluing and I need more. And, and here and elsewhere in the Word of God, um, to be clear, it's not money that's to blame. It's the love of money. It's a seeking satisfaction. It's a seeking of fulfillment and stuff. That's what drives Monday morning in the office and in the factory. That's what drives corruption. I need to get advanced and I need more than you. I need to move on and you're the collateral damage. Because we're here on earth and it's a fallen earth and we're among sinful men and women. And Solomon says, in the end, money will disappoint. The greatest riches are those which money cannot buy. This is wisdom literature. I wonder if you know that. The greatest riches are those which money cannot buy. I'm sure you've read poems from that very popular po poet, Anon. Uh, he or she wrote many, many great poems. Um, anyway, Anon rightly penned these words. Money can buy a bed, but not sleep. Money can buy books, but not brains. Money can buy a house, but not a home. Money can buy medicine, but not health. Money can buy amusements, but not happiness. Money can buy a passport to everywhere, but not heaven. Don't marvel when money disappoints. Thirdly, Solomon reminds us, on earth, in a fallen earth, even our own bodies will disappoint us. As we came, so shall we go. Um, we deceive ourselves and we make light of it. We're only as young, you're only as young as you feel. And the reality is you're only as old as we feel. And we feel the aches and the pains. And the world sells us lotion upon lotion that we may be forever young. A lot of people buy it. But we know that this outward tent perishes. We know that this body that was young and active isn't young and active anymore. The things that we used to do, jumping up, four steps at a time we do slowly now with a zimmer and a, and a stair lift and we're not as young as we used to be in the end our bodies disappoint us Solomon reminds us God is in heaven friend you're not we're on earth and it's not Eden anymore so don't let Monday morning surprise you. There is injustice. There's poverty. Vaccine distribution is as much a subject of that injustice as anything else. Rich nations, surprise, surprise, have plenty. Poorer nations have little. Now that's injustice. But it was always going to be that way. There were great promises. There would be an equality of vaccine distribution. That was never going to happen. Because this is a fallen world. Marvel not. Now, don't get me wrong and don't get Solomon wrong. Solomon's not saying, God's not saying that we ignore injustice. And God is not saying that we give in to corruption. God is a God of justice. He loves justice. But God is saying, Solomon is saying, the word of God's pretty clear. Be realistic. We cannot change a fallen world into heaven. But praise God, the Lord shall come. 
and we shall be changed and the elements shall melt and a new heaven and a new earth and therein dwelleth righteousness. And a better than Eden is coming and there'll be no corruption and no injustice and no more sin and no more sorrow and all the tears that have been caused by bullies will be wiped away. But be realistic. You can't change it. There will be a fallen world until Jesus Christ comes back and he'll fix it. And if you don't get that, then you'll be consumed and driven on by, I must change the world. You won't do it. You can't change the world into heaven. Why do you think for a minute that you can do that which only Jesus can? Many years ago, a long time ago, I was a trade unionist. Um, perhaps 35 years ago, I was in a union conference um, in the conference center in Blackpool. It was one of the conference centers that we visited year after year. Um, at that time, there was great injustice in Nicaragua. I think it was Nicaragua. The president of Nicaragua was battling left-wing terrorists. They were brothers and sisters of uh, my fellow trade unionists. And many of them were being killed and others were imprisoned. And I remember sitting in the conference hall in Blackpool and one delegate after another would come and uh, speak on the motion that this union condemned the president of Nicaragua and called upon him immediately to desist from oppressing our brethren, our fellow laborers to change the world and to bring in a communist ideal. And we insist that this outrage stops. And we had one delegate from Brighton North and one from London North and one from wherever. And uh, in my years in trade unionism, I had a dear friend who was a trade unionist with brains. And uh, there, are, there are some. And he turned to me at some point after the 10th delegate had gone up and demanded that the president of Nicaragua listen to them. And he turned to me and said, Peter, these people actually believe that the president of Nicaragua is on the phone. Find out what's happening in Blackpool. Should I, should I, should I, should I assault these terrorists or not? What do they want me to do in Blackpool? Um, you get yourself into that position if you, if you live beyond reality. Solomon's saying, get real. It's a fallen world. There's injustice. There's oppression. There's poverty. It's a fallen world. Right now, people will disappoint us. Money will disappoint us. Even our own bodies will begin to disappoint us. And Solomon says in verse 16, all of that is an evil. It's a sore evil. But Solomon returns again to the Lord of glory. And he finishes this chapter and he says, what the Lord gives will never disappoint. All that the Lord gives is good. Verse 16, this is a sore evil. But then as you read on, it's, it's God and it's good and there's joy. The hymn writer, um, the hymn 746, uh, we're not going to sing this, I'm just going to refer to it. Um, but he, be still my soul, he gets this. Be still my soul, the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord, when disappointments, grief and fear are gone. Until then we'll have disappointments. But we don't have to be overwhelmed by them. Monday morning doesn't have to be a surprise. We should be prepared for disappointment and injustice. And we'll have them until Jesus comes. 
But here at the end of this chapter, that which God gives, enjoy it. All the days of your life, enjoy. Behold, verse 18, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives. God doesn't give us anything other than good. All things are for our good. You're on earth, God's in heaven, and from heaven he orders everything for our good. God is good all the time. God is good. And he'll never disappoint. Verse 20, at the end of this chapter, uh, for he shall not much remember the days of his life. It's a, it's a somewhat complicated translation, but what Solomon's really saying is the one who enjoys what God gives him will not de- spend his days troubling much. His days, her days, will be filled with God-given joy and joy in God. Even when we see oppression and injustice and poverty and, and corruption, even when you have to stand by the gravesite. We don't stand at the graveside and mourn as those without hope. We stand at the graveside with a joy and a certain hope of a resurrection unto, the, uh, un, unto eternal life for all. There's life beyond the grave. What well, God has given you, enjoy it. If he's given you wealth, then you use it well, but you don't, in, you don't trust your eternity to your wealth or to your stuff. You don't find fulfillment in that. You don't find fulfillment and satisfaction in people, role models. Our culture exists on the worship of role models, and then role models disappoint, and, and you have people devastated. Solomon's saying, don't be, don't, don't be shocked. Don't be marvel. Don't marvel all that. Put your trust in God. People will disappoint us. And if we're honest, sometimes you'll be the one that's disappointing them. Sometimes you'll be the one that's disappointed with yourself. Solomon says, that's life under the sun. Now that we've left Eden, that's life on earth. Money and stuff will disappoint us. Our own bodies will wear out and disappoint us. So where do we turn and what do we do? And Solomon says, turn to God. Turn to God who's given his son the best of all gifts. Jesus Christ who's been given. That's, that's, that's the verb. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Gave him up to to the cross to be butchered on a Roman cross. Does God care? Does he know anything about injustice and corruption and abuse of power? Of course he does. Is he going to fix it? Of course he has fixed it. And, And that evidence of his fixing of this corrupt and fallen world will be displayed to the cosmos the day that Jesus Christ returns in power and glory and majesty through the, through the clouds. Where do you find your hope on Monday morning? Where do you find your hope on Tuesday morning? Well, if it's in people, they'll let you down. If it's in stuff, you'll never have enough. Turn to God, put your trust in him. He gives all that is good that we might enjoy our time under the sun. Even in a fallen world, we can enjoy it. We see something in creation that others don't see. We see the joy of the Lord in everything. Turn to the Lord, the living God. All his ways are good. You turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you this, you'll turn to one who will never disappoint you. 
who is without flaw and who will keep you even when your body disappoints, even when in the end your body fails, Jesus Christ will raise you from the dead. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You'll find him altogether good. May Jesus be the joy of your heart now and always. Amen.